Good morning. I was recently asked to do a garden tour of my garden. This is my backyard. And we're going to do a little walk. I haven't cleaned it up because I hadn't thought of doing that until now. And this area, when we moved into this house, looks directly into the garage and driveway. And so I had this wall of lattice put in. It's a cottage, it's an 80 year old cottage. And so the lattice was a look that works for it. I have potted plants here and they are on drip. I was a landscape designer, created a two and a quarter acre botanic garden that was on a home tour for seven consecutive years before we sold. And so I love plants. This, for example, is cordyline. And one of the things I told people regularly, this purple or um, uh, burgundy kind of leafed plant is, it doesn't matter if you like the plant, like what it can do as it breaks up greens and adds additional dimension to a garden. The spiky leaves next to this chartreuse of the asparagus fern and the smaller leaves of some of these um, potted plants, even that yucca in the background isn't there because it's a yucca, it's there because it has, again, a vertical accent leaf. And I'll show you another plant that looks oh, unimportant. This one is sweet olive. That tiny flower in the evening emits a beautiful fragrance, not sickening sweet, but just perfect. So as I walk down and we do have lights and we do have a sunshade, you'll see that there are hedges Yes, hedges have to be trimmed, but they give accent to any bed. And the bed in front of me is surrounded, it's an island, by a brick pathway. This entire property is 7,500 uh, square feet. And this is, I'll show you back to the house. The house, the cottage, sits on about 1,900 square feet and so there's not much yard left but I'll walk you through it roses that haven't quite bloomed yet so this is the end of April just about the last day of April no it's not it's the 24th and again the burgundy leaf of a bromeliad that I have in an iron pot again sets off the green beautifully. This is a fig tree that I've trained the branches on by tying it to a scaffolding to give it an interesting look. The garden and this area is too shaded to get any figs. So I've been here 18 years, never had a fig. This is a peach tree, a Saturn peach, and I'll get a few peaches from the very top, but it was really there just to espalier that's the name of what this is, a spalling, uh, flat facing a plant. And then this is, and I've shown this again and again, the Brugmansia angel's trumpet. It's not in bloom yet, almost. These are closed, but it will be a bright white trumpet flower. And I have just a combination of things like my, um, this is a California native uh, of all things. It's a, um, oh, I wonder if I'm gonna remember plants names while I'm trying to walk you through. It's a, um, I'm gonna have to work on that. I may put the name on the picture. Actually, I won't have a picture, will I? Well, let's see what I can do with that. This here, I plant for its leaf. And yet look what it does in the spring. It sends out these beautiful uh, spires. That is called heuchera, H-E-U-C-H-E-R-A. Then I have some salvias and the salvias bring in the, um, 
hummingbirds. These are alstromerias. You'll see an entire bank of alstromerias there of a different color. This plant here is a South African basil. The leaf smells exactly like basil, but it's a rougher leaf, so I wouldn't use it in a culinary way, backed up with an iris. And when this blooms, it is a um, big white flower. I'll have to think of the name of that and I'll just post that. Okay. Um, a butylon. I have a number of abutilons. They love a partial shade, so that works here uh, in my Southern California garden. Another one a little bit higher up. And this is a crepe myrtle that all of this is under. And this is what I do with my garden. Upper stories, mid story, lower story, some roses that haven't bloomed yet. You see the aphids on this rose? It doesn't matter. The ladybugs will come and eat them. I would never spray because that would kill birds that ate the bugs and it would also damage the environment. I have some um, chives here and I have some bok choy and irises that have finished blooming but you can see above that where some of the irises are, are irises are still in bloom. This deep deep purple iris and again roses that are about to bloom. This is Bernfeldsia. It is uh, commonly called yesterday, today, and tomorrow because it initially blooms with this purple flower that fades to a lavender and that ultimately will fade almost to a white. And this gnarly stemmed plant is a euphorbia, euphorbia milii, that has a very sweet flower. That is the same genus as poinsettia. And one of the things that distinguishes euphorbia, this is also a euphorbia, it's called sticks of fire. One of the things that distinguishes it is this latex sap. You see that? I just broke off a stem. And what it's going to do is it's going to bleed and then drip this latex sap. And so it makes it a little harder to work with because that's sticky and um, it can be caustic on our skin. I have a lot of fun hanging things. Here's one of the Brugmansia that is just starting to open. And there's another one back there. So Brugmansia, common name is um, angel's trumpet, and the entire plant, leaves, flowers, stems, is toxic. I wouldn't chew on it, and I wouldn't have an animal around that would, and we've lived here again eight years with dogs and cats and no damage. This is the area that we dine in during the summer. It's cool. And in this tiny backyard, I have many sitting, seating or sitting areas. Oh, I'm gonna show you another abutilon. This is why I like abutilons. Look at this leaf, isn't that spectacular? It's an abutilon, same kind of flower. This little dead leaf I'll pull off. But same kind of flower, but different color, but it's the leaf of this one that I love so much. And there's another Brunfeldsia, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. But I just collected things to put in this structure that we built when we bought the house in 205. And the structure is covered by a rose bush that is just starting to bloom. Look at this. This is Cecil Bruner Roses. This was the founder's founder of the rose, the hybridizer of the rose, that was his niece, Cecil, Cecil Bruner. Some people call it Cecil Bruner, but it's Cecil. And this will be covered with these beautiful pink roses, but only for a month or two, and it only blooms once a year, which is a real shame, as opposed to most roses that bloom again and again. This one is a Melianthus. Now, 
you look at the garden with a lot of small green leaves. We've got some vertical accent here. This was snow in the summer, so it's a bulb. So those bulbs have to sort of reabsorb the energy of their leaves. That's why you don't cut them down. Milianthus has a spire. Do you see these flowers? And they call it commonly honey bush. Why? Because these flowers have in them a sweet sap. We are in Southern California. We don't attract cardinals, and yet we have them come here for the sweetness on that flower. This is called shrimp plant. You can kind of see why. And it's not in full bloom, but it's starting. Again, these beautiful purple irises and a close-up of the Elstrom areas and yet another dining area. Tiny garden, but lots of places to go for a respite. This here is a tree that is as purple a purple flower <laughs> as you can get. Some people call it purple potato vine, common name, but that's not it. I'll have to write down that one as well. And look at this rose that's in bloom. This is called hot cocoa. And do you see how the hot cocoa blends beautifully with the Alstromeria? It's fun to put things together that work that way. Here's another shot of hot cocoa. Isn't that pretty? And this, at this time of the year, is this kind of a, uh, oh, I don't know. It's more orange. It will get much, much more burgundy as the year goes on. Oh, there's some more of the shrimp plant. Do you see that? Okay. And then this is something called Fuchsia Gardenmeister. Look at the flower. It is a hummingbird favorite. It's next to my bird feeder, so we have a lot of birds in this garden. And then we have some geraniums and calla lilies, more um, hedges, and then back to where we started. So that is, in a nutshell, my backyard garden. Their sound from these deep chime uh, hanging um, chimes and um, always a water feature in my gardens for the sound and for the birds. I never put anything in them that will interfere with their health. I think that's that. I'll turn you around. Oh, am I on? <laughs> and say thank you for joining me on my garden walk. Have a great day because I know I'm going to. Bye-bye.